Oh, hello. I didn't see you come in there. This is the Flying Jester, and I'm going to talk about Sega Saturn emulators. The Sega Saturn is a hard thing to actually emulate, or at least I imagine it is. I haven't actually tried making an emulator. But it has five processors. One is a dual-core general processor. It has two not-quite-identical graphics processors. And it also has a few separate sort of housekeeping processors, including a 68K, which is a very common processor, and about six very small but substantial and important processors that are completely unique to it. So it's sort of surprising to me that there are so many emulators that can actually do a passable job. The one I'm going to test today is called Saturn, and you're watching it try and play Nights into Dreams. Raps didn't record any video for the main opening, which is not surprising. It looked weird and stretched out. As you can see, there's sort of a problem with the overlap of the clouds, but all in all, pretty good. And, oh, Jesus, what is going on here? I've seen this before. Yabiyus does the same thing when it actually decides to play Nights in Your Dreams, that is. Yabiyus actually plays this game once in a blue moon. It's only happened to me a couple times, and it always looked like this when it did and Saturn seems to actually start at about half the time. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to when it works and when it doesn't. This is the swirl animation from when Knights does a loop, but it's sort of on top of everything, and it causes these weird lines to appear, and as awesome as this looks, I generally don't consider this actual emulation, because this is not at all what it should look like. Fortunately, Saturn lets me disable certain parts of the video at once, so I did a little research, looked through the settings, and I've actually disabled the part of the screen that was showing me that. Unfortunately, that sort of makes the backgrounds look like this weird, ghostly night. Here we go, I'm trying to play, and it's very difficult to actually do loops using the keyboard. It, I thought it was bad just using the not-3D controller, but this is almost impossible. But that's not the emulator's fault, that's just because I don't have a good gamepad or anything for it. If I did, I'm sure this would work very well. And Saturn can actually take the uh, input from like a 360 controller, so if I had that hooked up right now, this would actually be playable. And it actually plays very smoothly, I haven't seen any drops in frame rates, which actually is quite common for emulators, especially on my laptop. My laptop is getting older. So this works pretty well. I would actually see playing this even though the swirly animations are gone and generally speaking it doesn't look as nice as I remember and I have played this very recently. Of course I do plan on doing a let's play of Nights in the Dream sometimes. That is where I get the name Flying Jester. So let's have a look at another game. This is Casper. This is almost impossible to get an emulator to play and as you can see it's not working quite right. All of the words appear just garbled, and it took a lot of trial and error to get this to actually work. Even with all the sayings the way they are now, which is the only way I can get it to actually work, I didn't think it was working at the start, mainly because when it's supposed to show a cutscene, which the game starts with, it just shows you this gray screen and the frame rate drops to about 3 frames per second. If I just keep spamming the start button though, it does work. Right now, I'm using the Japanese ROM with the European game, and to actually get it to work, not only do I have to have sound enabled, but I also have to use the plugin for Saturn that is the debug sound, which doesn't actually work. It looks okay. I mean, you can tell it's not quite right, but this is actually playable. The main problem, though, is that save states don't work for Casper, which is a problem if I was actually going to try and play this game all the way through because it takes about 10 or 12 hours to actually finish it, and as it is, I have no way of saving my data. And Yabiyus can't play it at all. It actually gets pretty far, but once it tries to access the main memory of the system to make a save, Yabiyus can't handle that. It can access the emulated cartridge memory in Yabiyus, but whenever I enable that plugin, it fails when it tries to load specific sounds, that's because I have to have the European ROM to do that. So again, it's just completely incompatible with Yaba use. It's not entirely surprising that Casper has so many problems with creating saves and using cartridge memory and all that on emulators. It did create one of the largest save files of any Saturn game. 
I own all but 14 of the Saturn games that came out in North America. Not all the North American releases of them. But it's not like there's some pot of gold or something sitting on top of the TV when I finally do get them all. I've never seen another game that makes a save file this big. It's 256 kilobytes. It, it almost maxes out my uh, save cartridge. I don't have the biggest save cartridge, but I have the biggest one that you could just buy that was licensed by Sega. And it's also the biggest one you could technically get for an American system. I think the European ones work too, but I know the Japanese ones did not. So this works pretty well. I, I could see actually playing through if I could save. I'm kind of confused as to why the words come out all garbled. It's not like it's getting anything from the BIOS to put in the Japanese letters, and I know that the BIOS had support for all the Japanese letters. So I don't really know why that's happening. Loading screens are also completely bugged out. I'm skipping through all the scenes that sort of look bad because I've already played this for a little bit. Some of the screens just have weird fractals everywhere. Some of them are just garbled graphics that are missing. And as you can see, some parts of the floor seem to scroll strangely. Fraps can't actually record what it looks like exactly, but it's a pretty good, it gives you a pretty good idea. The other problem, it seems, is that input doesn't always work to it, and that's probably because the frame rates are varying wildly. I could have shown you a lot of other games, but this one has by far the greatest combination of problems with it, while still working. Many, many games don't work at all, and I mean at all. This one I only just got to work. So that's a look at a couple of the games I tried to play using emulators. Interesting results. But as long as I have the game, I think I'll just use the Sig set.